our nose right in there and having a good sniff around the Monday Scrum. And it's great to be back with fellow scrummagers. Adam Peacock here next to Brent Reid. Bonjour. All the way from Gay Paris. Yeah. How are you, Reedy? I'm great. Welcome back. Great. I went from uh, Gay Paris Mm -hmm. to Brookvale to Wollongong on the weekend. How come? It's a long way from Paris, Wollongong. Yes. Great spot, though. I'm not bagging Wollongong, but anyway. What's up? You know what? We we were on the radio yesterday (laughs) and we were talking about it. It's like, do you know, like, Sydney is like a, a, a trip of a lifetime destination? For who? For like the overwhelming majority of travellers on the planet of 8 billion people. <laughs> okay. James Graham, hello. I'm not bad in Sydney, right. Jimmy. I love Sydney. No, but you were down there in the gong yesterday, like, oh, poor me. A little bit of rain. Like, people come <laughs> to bit Sydney for the trip of a Friday lifetime. North? They come once for a trip of a lifetime. Well, they need to get out more. <laughs> anyway, it's great to be back. JD's here me? as well. How are you, mate? Good, mate. Excited to have you back, boys. It's been, yes. uh, it's been great. Jimmy's held the fort up really well. He did. He hosted the, well. Um, <laughs> Read his mail. He's Good been mail, outstanding. Wasn't it? Good mail. Oh, yeah. mate. Did, look. I felt like I'd heard it before. But... <laughs> mm. did, did, did you listen to Read his mail? <laughs> no, I didn't, Jimmy. No. Sorry. All right. Okay. It's good. <laughs> mate, well. I heard it was good, though. I got weekly reports and I heard it was outstanding mate, mail. Well, it, yeah. I, I'm more than happy to continue on. Okay. Well, well, no, I, I might need help today. I, I so it'll be good. You go with your mail and let, <laughs> let, let, let's see if it follows the the, 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 the sort of topics that I talked about. <sighs> okay. Terrific. Where'd you go? What'd you touch on? Oh, well, let's let's save okay. it. Let's save it. Uh, Sorry, Adam. We'll, get, we'll start with some footy talk. JD's over in the corner in there. This is the this is the knowledgeable end Mate, of the Mate, he's scribbling desk. down, isn't he? He's scribbling he's down. taking notes. He's working out top eight permutations and everything. confused. What I want to know from your perspective, (laughs) from your perspective, do the Dragons, are they overwhelming favourites to hold their spot and two bad Dolphins and anyone below them on the ladder at the moment? Dolphins are shot. They've been shot for a long time. Yeah. Um, I thought that was probably one of their worst performances of the season on the weekend. And I think they've won two from their last 11. I can't see them winning another game. They've got a tough run home. I think, you know, the only challenge is really going to come from potentially the Broncos, but... The Dragons, that win on the weekend has set them up to control their own destiny now. Mm. Um, and you can f- you could feel that in their performance. I thought it was a pretty special performance with the players they lost leading into this game, the changes they had to make, but they still come out and were, were dominant in that game. It was a massive game against the Sharks this week. Mm. And if they can nail that, they can just put to bed any hope the, the teams below them have. So it'll be a great game this week. They're locked in, in your opinion? It's Dragons to lose. Mm-hmm. Yep. It, it's it's the Dragons to lose. I, I, I don't think um, the, the Dolphins, the Broncos, or the Knights uh, win back a playoff spot. The Dragons lose it. Mm. It's as simple as that. They um, yeah, the, the tough game is is this weekend against the against the Sharks. Obviously, there's a fair bit of well, it's a big rivalry anyway. But when the, obviously the the head coach um, hmm. obviously used to be employed at the Sharks and won them a premiership. He danced uh, around it after the game yesterday. Do you think he's going to dance around it this week in terms of, you know, Flanagan against the Sharks? Well, last big time, game. Yeah, last time he sort of he he did take the the pressure off his players by making it about him, and that was on Anzac Day after yeah. he just yes. that was basically him throwing yeah. off, wasn't it? Um, but just in terms of the the Dragons, who you know after after that they play Parra and then Canberra. Who are currently sitting on eleven wins? The the rest of, the rest of the competition. Yeah, do, I, yeah. They need to win two of the last three. Yeah, I and think. then because I, I think Brisbane will win the last three. They'll beat the Storm in the last I, round. Well, the Storm will rest players in the last round. So yeah, I think Brisbane will win mm. three games. So I think based off what? Based off what do you mean? Based on I believe they can win three games. What what what, what evidence? Like so that's based on the Melbourne resting players in the last yes. round. Well, got Mel- Melbourne in at Suncorp is almost a guaranteed mm. two points. So I think if and they rest th- players, well, I think they will. Which rest. I think, that, think I, I do. Yeah. I do. I think they will. Yeah. How well, is mate, that thought of in within the game when you get to that last round and teams are because they've they've floated the idea of having the break in between end of season and finals to make sure to guarantee the integrity of the competition. Yeah. Like inside the game, coaching wise, you're oh. more than happy to just let that fly and. Yeah, I think. You've earned, if you're resting plays, you've earned the right through 27 rounds of performances 
to say, okay, now we're pre- prepping. And everyone says it at the end of the season, okay, the new competition starts now. Mm. So if you've got an opportunity to rest some of your players and get them ready for the new competition, and bear in mind, a lot of players will be carrying niggles going in that last round. And also, the way the game's refereed these days in terms of it doesn't take much to serve a suspension. Mm. You know, an accidental high shot or, you know, something doesn't go quite right and you, you could be sitting on the sideline. So it takes that risk out as well. I really like the idea of them having a week off. I think it'd be outstanding to do that so that everyone focuses on the end of the season, get the job done, everyone gets a rest, everyone goes in, and you get the best teams fit and fresh and ready to go. The only issue over that, JD, is what if you – so under the current system, um, everyone has a buy at some point, right? So if, if you're a team uh, in round 27 and you've got the buy and you're playing finals footy and then you have a week off the week after – is that too long uh, between games, potentially? Yeah, potentially. I think, you know, that it, it'd probably have to be something they look at if it goes to even numbers yeah. again. Which it will do down yeah. the track, as Jimmy revealed, I believe, recently on yeah, his yeah. mail. Yeah, it was yeah. it was a big part of his mail <laughs> that apparently new, P&G are sniffing about for a spot <laughs> in the NRL. There's, there's news Frank. imminent. I Can I go back to what Jimmy said? What, on, what, on what am I basing? Um, I think the Dragons need to win at least two games. And, and Brisbane will win the next three. I think Brisbane's draw, if you look at it, they've got para. Mm-hmm. At home, yep, should win that. They got Dolphins at home because it's at Suncorp, mm-hmm. and then they've got Melbourne, Melbourne with players home. being rested. I think Brisbane win all those games with yeah. no with no Haas, with no Walsh. Well, there's a chance Haas is back no at some point during that period. You can't yeah. trust them. Well, you at can't. The moment. You can't trust Para, and you can't. And the Dolphins no. are going like you can't, you you can't trust Brisbane about. at the moment, and well, the, the, you might be able to trust them in a month, but not at the moment. Sure, well, they've got a, the, the big derby game. Yeah, then. Which the, they've been dominant in, to be fair. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. I, I just... But two I'm games not, ago, they got smoked by Gold Coast. Yeah. So, I, look, I don't... I think that do, that derby game's going to be huge, isn't it? Mm. It's going to be a great game to watch. Mm. It's going to be, you know, they, they're they still both fighting to make the finals. You know, I'm saying Dolphins are gone, but mathematically, there's still a big chance. But they're going to have to win. They're going to have to win every game, any of those teams, to make it. I, I definitely think the Dragons are going to bag two. Yeah, and Flanagan's going to know... Learn. He's been learning about his players all year, the first year in the job, Jimmy. But over the next three weeks, with that prospect, you said, destiny, own hands. He's going to learn a bit about the mentality, the drive, everything about his players, about, okay, this is a different position. We're, we're not yeah. the underdog now. We have something that we've earned to lose rather than kind of coming at it from the other way. So how do they approach it, these players? Well just more of the same what they've done so far has got them into this position um yeah th- look ju- just looking at everything talking amongst ourselves here it the the, the dragons basically now that it, it's this but mm-hmm. barring something catastrophic happening to them with injuries or further suspension it, it's this their, it- la- their last few weeks though have been outstanding performance Poor performance. Yeah. Outstanding performance, poor performance. Backed it up again with a good performance this week. So, again, mm. like you said, to your point, Flano is going to want to see where his players are at this weekend because it's a big game against the Sharks. Mm. Do you carry that thought, like when you learn things like that as a coach about your players, do you carry that on for what you're trying to plan to do? Because obviously this is not the end game for the Dragons. They want to set a standard now and build – Whereas in two years' time, they're top four contenders as yeah. opposed to let's make the eight. How much of that do you take out of your f- forward planning about your players going forward? Oh, you take plenty out of it. I think if you look what Flano's done over the last month or six weeks, you know, he's signed Damian Cook, signed Valentine Holmes. Go back 12 months, Ben Hunt is looking to get out of his contract. Mm. Doesn't know the direction the club's going in. Doesn't believe that it's it's – striving to be better or trying to make finals go forward 12 months. And Damien Cook, Valentine Holmes are coming. So those players that are there now, they know that we're building something here. And that, mm. that drives some excitement in the, in the changing rooms and that right now, because mm. they want to be part of that. So I think it's, you know, like Jimmy said, it's theirs, theirs to lose. Mm. That's the best part about where they're at. But the consistency hasn't been there over the last five weeks. So he needs to try to, the teams they're playing, they should realistically, this will be a massive game. They should win the next two comfortably. So they put the pressure's on them as a team now. Back to the start of March, many people saying, oh, it's a 
bit of a question whether the dogs are going to make the finals. Well, now it's no question, is it? They're there. They're playing the style of footy that <laughs> um, they deservedly are there and they've got the chance of winning two or three games in September the way they're going about it. You were there in uh, Bundaberg on the weekend. Shirt on or shirt off? Uh, I was uh, fully closed, especially for the team song. Uh, I was busy helping out, yeah, doing some work while Josh Reynolds was busy singing in the mixer. Doing uh, some work, where? What sort of work we did up there, Jimmy? Where was it? Okay, having um, a few drinks, where? If, if well, I didn't need any permission, but yes, I did have some. <laughs> no, he's in Bundaberg. Yeah, uh, just he's not in a dry there, rum. No, 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 no just okay. stuck to. Good old faithful beer. Um, he's not in Qatar where you're not allowed to drink. Okay. He's checking. over in... We said he was working. <laughs> How good is this cough button I've just noticed? Jim, Jimmy's been using a few times. <laughs> like, is oh, look what is he pressing the... there and it's yeah. actually, it actually says cough. <laughs> <laughs> the magic Trick, of radio. Tricks of the oh, I love that. I'm learning something all the time. <laughs> no, it, it was a really um, my, a great performance from the Bulldogs. Um, defensively, uh, and with the ball as well, scoring 30 points. I still think there is um, a lot of improvement in that attack. Mm. Um, you know, at, at times they, they, they didn't capitalise on some of the opportunities, but defensively, first class, you know, they obviously, um, well, one of the two tries they conceded was from a from an intercept pass as well. So the the dogs are looking strong. They really restricted the star players of the, of the Dolphins, like the Hammer. Um, they put him in him in some very difficult positions when he was returning the ball out of the backfield, and the the the, the best form of their attack was the defence. They mm. just suffocated the Dolphins, especially in in that second half. And yeah, I think uh, Dogs now guaranteed to to play finals. Obviously, the the victory yesterday for the for the Sharks puts them in pole position for for top four. But um, yeah, the the Dogs are in the mixer and they're they're looking strong. Just Based off off their defence, it was it was sensational. They look like an exceptionally well coached team, the Dogs. You know, I think he's done. Amazing. He got he got a bit of flack last year, Cam Seraldo, for um, I suppose not hitting the ground running because there was so much hype around him. But you can see this year um, what he's done with that team. They just look so well drilled, so disciplined, um, and just so well coached. And I, and I think for me, I think they've overachieved this year. I think. They're beyond where I thought they – well, I didn't think they'd make the finals. but So they're well beyond where I thought they'd be. And I, I think maybe – I don't think they're going to challenge for a premiership, but I don't think they're that far away now. They're close than a lot, a lot of people maybe thought they were. Well, you, they don't beat themselves. No. So you know when you play them, you're going to have to beat them and you're going to have to – I think to beat them, you've got to score four tries. I think you've got to, you've got to break that defence up because I think – am I right in saying they're, they're the best defensive team in the comp now or just short of it? Um, I think they actually I mean, went past right. yeah. they went past Penrith on the weekend. So, you yes. know, what I like conceded three hundred and thirty seven. Penrith have conceded three hundred forty eight. Well, there you go. You know, that's a phenomenal achievement. Mm. And what I liked about the game on the weekend was go back a few weeks when they played Brisbane and everyone was talking about their attack and they came out in a fast track and they played really expansive style of footy and they moved the big big Brisbane pack around. On the weekend, they had a clear plan to isolate defenders in and around the ruck, hit them down short sides. They had a, a real opportunity to go through the middle third or through the front door, and they did that. Every one of their tries, except for the first one, went through the front door, Burton late in the game, left mm. foot. But they built that into their game with 40, 50, 60 minutes of just grinding them down, grinding them down. In the end, the Dolphins, they couldn't stay with them, and they got blown away. They've won a lot of games, tight games this year, Dogs, which is one thing. But just having a look again at their draw, thinking, okay – Away trip, even though it was a home game where Josh Reynolds could get his shirt off and James could meet everyone in Bundaberg and have a beer with him um, or a Bundy with him. They go away there, get the job done in emphatic style. Brisbane a few weeks ago when they had Reynolds and Walsh and you're thinking, oh, Saturday afternoon, they're just going to get smoked here. Mm. Away, siege mentality. Newcastle a few weeks before that, put 30 on Newcastle, don't. So it, it tells me of a team that doesn't get distracted by just, and I don't know if they're, this is a thing in rugby league, it's certainly the case in other sports, of you go away from your home comforts and it becomes a bit difficult. You, you put off, you tipped off your axis really easy by a home crowd or some bad decisions from the ref who, who's got the crowd in his ear. They just get it done. And they've those three big victories 
well away from Belmore Rains, uh, uh, a core stadium is is huge. Yeah, that, well, obviously they had the the trip to the Cowboys, back to Sydney, and then up to Brisbane. Mm. They lost to the Cowboys, and then went to Brisbane and got the victory. Um, they travelled again to Bundaberg, and then they go a short turn round and fly over to the Tasman to play the, the Warriors as well. So, um, yeah, we're playing playing in teams. Some teams can get really distracted by travels, put you out, you put you out of sync. Um, you know, we see it on tour a, a number of times where where players just get comfortable with buffet food and whatnot, and they catch up with people in other areas of the, the the country, and they just it just takes their their mind off things. But they the the dogs seem to be able to to handle that at the moment. It is a a, a skill set um, that that you do need to to focus on and concentrate on, especially coming into this business end of the season where you know re- recovery is a priority. And we spoke about. Um, having that week off before finals, obviously some teams get that luxury. The dogs won't have that. Mm. So you've got to maximize um, your recovery opportunities. And maybe the dogs look when they go away, they, they do that. And it's that some, sometimes I, you, you go away, you're a happy camp together. Mm. It can actually you know, benefit you as opposed to being a, a negative side of the game. And eating too many hash browns at the buffet. Exactly. It's hard to say no though, isn't it? Like you go back off. Oh. Well, just look at Reedy after what... <laughs> Two weeks in Paris. Yeah, it was tough. Yeah, the buffet was very good in croissants. the uh, hotel. A lot of croissants, a lot of baguettes, actually. Ah, the, okay. The bread's very good. Yeah, how good there. is the bread? It's outstanding, oh. isn't it? And fritz, a lot of fritz. Oh, a lot of fritz, a lot of fritz. Well, it was a German thing. No, it's come across steak the border. Steak and fritz. Right. Oh, hey, oh um, steak and fritz. I thought teams. you meant like fritz is in like Devon and soft. Like, sorry. Just in terms of the bulldogs, fries. the one player who's really um. You know, I think at the start of the year when I questioned the dogs, and I wasn't the only one, I think the areas we questioned them on were their middles and their and their halfback. And I reckon Toby Sexton in the past 10 weeks, he's just grown and grown and grown every week and just become sort of the player everyone thought he would become when he was at the Gold Coast, right? Yeah, he's certainly added to that um, attack. And, you know, and, and good on him. He spent a fair bit of time in... Uh, in New South Wales Cup yeah, and, and, and year, didn't, didn't give up. And obviously Drew Hutchison was the was the man to begin the season. Um, and he yet, looks like a good bloke too. Looks yeah, like a popular well, guy. Well, well, you know what, really? When you look back, you were right to have those question marks about, oh, who's going to steer this team around? You know, where's this, how is this forward pack going to compete? Mm-hmm. People were right to think that. Um, but they've just gone about it a different way. They realise what they have. So how can you find out a way to... Work with what you have. Okay, well, we don't have the alpha male. We don't have a a, a Fenua Blake or a Payne Haas to just hang our hats on and say he's going to carry us or a Tino Fasua Malaawe. Like that's been the traditional way. If you got this this big forward leader and they drag some of their forwards with them, but they just go about it a different way and they do it together. I've said this before. If I was playing against this Bulldogs team, I'd look at that pack on paper and go, oh, yeah, kick out. Yeah, he's 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 the one, but obviously he doesn't play in the middle. I'd look at the middle and go. I'm going to be all over these guys today, mm. but they just hit you together. They <laughs> work so well together as a unit. There was times on the weekend where Tavita Pangai Jr., that alpha male, that that you know, the, the almost a a new leader of the the pack at the Dolphins, he got some half opportunities where he isolated some of those smaller players. The smaller player in the middle clings on, and then they clean him up together. Mm. Like it's it's it's. It's like, magnificent to watch because we've never really seen a team that are don't have much in terms of like reputation or like international stars minus Kikau that go about their business like guys like Harry Hayes comes on, Bailey Haywood comes on, and they just get into this system and do their job, but they work together. Now Kurt Kurt Mann and Curtis Moran for me have been outstanding yeah. for them, and they bring. That while they don't bring size, they they're both extremely strong, bloke for their size, and they bring some late feet and some punch through the middle third. They both hit through the middle. Their 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 pack is so underrated. You know their mm. back row is as good as any back row in the competition at the moment with Kikau and with um, Preston. Preston Preston's been outstanding for them. Mm. So. Again, they, everyone talked about the start of the year about their recruitment. Oh, they've got all these utility players. Where are they going to play? But I think what it's done is it's created competition for places as well. And as the season's rolled on, everybody's still fighting for their spot. 
and it's created this team dynamic that everybody doesn't care who plays first grade. We're all in this together. Anybody who comes in does his job and supports each other. They've had a lot of rotation in the pack, mm. a lot of rotation. You know, Preston was out for a bit. Kick out was out for a bit. Ado Carr's been out for a long time. Like Ado Carr's doing well to keep his spot because Wilson was killing it before mm. he got injured. So they've got depth as well now. So it's a, it's a scary thought. And they've won me over, I'll, I'll be honest. I, I'm really happy with how they've gone this year. And we were one of the teams who beat them early in the year. And it was a brutal game. Like we, mm. we had a couple of things go our way. And we got stuck in our way. And like Penrith do, I think we defended 50 tackles inside our cage that day because they just keep coming and coming and coming. They've got better with their attack. Jason Taylor's done a great job. And you could see that on the weekend. They, they got different variety of style how they can turn it on and turn it and they can play with if you want them to, or they'll come through the front door. So I think what they, what you see now is a team that just love but playing together. Go back mm. to what you were talking about before about the travel. The, the thing you want when you travel is you want the boys to be connected, mm. enjoy spending time together because that's the, the biggest battle, right? And they look like they're a team that loves playing footy together but loves spending time together as well. That helps. That helps. Just around the corner, we've got the WTF moment of the week or it could be Reedy's WTF moment of the Olympics. I wouldn't mind hearing that one. Mm. But before we move on to that, just uh, the moment that stood out from Bundaberg that got a lot of headlines, obviously, was the race between Hammer and the Fox. And the Fox got caught by the Hammer, which was outstanding. It was brilliant viewing. And they're talking about a race on grand final day, the quickest player in league or whatever, which which would be great. I'd actually extend it because it's a long half time break. And instead of just paying ridiculous money for an international act to come out and sing a song, you can just get up on Spotify for free anyway. What about the fast race and then have a slow race? So the slowest player of your top 30 enters the race but tries to win it. That would be good to watch. I've got the, an the issue. fastest I've, slow player I've, in the league. I've got an issue with the Do you race. You want to come last? No, you you <laughs> want to be you want to be the slowest, but you, then you have got to try and win. The, and there's nothing better than seeing slow people try to run. I fast. saw Cody Walker in the clear on the weekend, <laughs> and I reckon he could be up there. <laughs> Renault ran him down earlier in the year as well, so Codes could be. In Father Tom's ticket on, but he could be the man. And it's 100 metres as well. Not the ones that, I reckon Cody's still got that pop over 10, 20, but when it gets over anything like that. I like the race concept, but I can't see how it can work. You got Why not? Because you, you've got 15 teams on holidays. Yeah. You're going to tell blokes you can't go away. You've got to stay around no, no, no. for a race. Oh, so how's it work? I'm just, how's you're, it work? you're overthinking it. Not really. Look at some, fair, is that not a fair question? Look at someone in the Olympics who couldn't dance to dance, so they can get gonna, someone. You, I you would have to have big prize money to convince blokes to hang around for that. I don't think Ado Car would be in the top five now. No, no he, he, looks, he looks big, Jay. He's got big. Think? Yeah, he's got big. And don't get me wrong, he's still w- I think rapid the, and lightning. But first you know, forty, some, he's got some it. names in the game at the moment. Yeah, definitely over the first forty, but. Hammer's stride. And he's coming back from a hammy injury as well, but Hammer's... Yeah. Jimmy, he's not happy. Uh, oh, what? really? Just, is and that then, not a fair question, Jimmy? What we're talking about, the, what, you can't race because it's off-season? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You'd have to give, the coaches would have to agree that they get one extra exactly. day off. The players, the, union, the players they let, union would get involved. They let them box. Oh, no, you can't yeah. run 100 metres. Oh, you go have a boxing match. Yeah, no worries. Yeah, but they get paid oh, a lot of you, money Jimmy. to box. They get paid a lot of money to box, Jimmy. Twenty yeah, grand for the winner to play footy. But it's about entertain. You're in the inter- and it's about it's about pride. I am the fastest man in the NRL. Okay. Imagine that. Okay. So they get resume. an international act to do half time show. I reckon they're minimum fifty, hundred. I don't know what a going rate is for. Oh, you need it. It needs to be a hundred grand when it takes all. No, oh, not hundred oh, grand. Shush. You mentalist. <laughs> twenty. I reckon you get it with twenty. No, you would no not tax. get them for it's twenty money, grand. So you yeah, lose 20, half of that in tax. Yeah, maybe thirty to fifty. No, at least a hundred grand. You, you don't you, pay tax on prize money; it's a donation. Mate, <laughs> you, you've been corrupt by the Olympic Committee. Like it all used to be <laughs> yeah. about taking part, pride. Yeah. I've won that yeah. medal. You know, now they're getting paid for gold. You are insane. Like just. Just have it as the, the pride. You Charlie get to, just you, said the buy Randall sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> Is that right? You must oh, make, apparently it's not going to go ahead. <laughs> <must be> <laughs> these if, days. if we're going to sponsor it, we're doing Mate, the, the players fifth, union. We're doing the fifteen hundred, so I can enter and win it. Players union will get them an extra day off. They come back for yeah. that. And, and the other thing, they'll have stopped training for four weeks. What? You know, they'll stop training for the four weeks. The modern-day athlete doesn't stop training. We've not seen the Premier League. They, they had like a three-week break. Phil Foden was that out there do, yeah. doing his thing. It's th- 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 That's the old days. Players don't have these times okay. off now. They Fair do enough. all their own training. They source their own sprint coaches. I reckon it's yeah. a pre-season thing. Because you, you're going to have two teams playing in the grand final. So 
one of them might be the fastest in the game. There you go. They... There's another problem. How, how are they going to race? That's a you good just, point. That's the, a good point. Your JD. default <laughs> setting is to think of problems. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the glass is either full or half full or half empty. On this, it's half empty. <laughs> <laughs> but he wrote, JD raised a very good point. What if uh, Manly in the grand final, Jason Saab and Tolu Kula. He doesn't get to run. race, obviously. <laughs> so <laughs> That's what you do. So yeah. you haven't found out the NRL's fastest man, Jimmy. You're going to have to have another race a week later yeah. involving those two blakes against Steve, the winner. Steve, uh, Saab needs to come out now of this halftime, half-time chat. He's, yeah. he's got 100 yards to run. Yeah. Mate, there are some rapid players getting around the NRL, though, yeah. at the moment, isn't there? Yeah. There's Mariner at Brisbane. Yep. Khan Pereira. Yep. He's Kenny. lightning. I'm on, I'm on Hammer, though, over 100. Yeah. The way he did not lose anything of his technique, the further he went, mm. mate, he destroyed See, I reckon, everyone. I reckon if the Hammer doesn't make that tackle, he's disappointed. I reckon Herbie makes it. In the corner, because, the corner because if you look, if yeah, you actually look at it from yeah. the, the 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 above camera, he had a start on on the fox because there was a couple of interchanges of passing. He, him and Herb, he start to anticipate the break. Mm. There you go. Like everyone's saying, he caught the fox, and rightly so, because he ha- he had the start on him. No. And you're not he didn't running start. He, he's the, he, I know he's got to run an He's angle. a little bit in front, but he's running. Yeah. It'd be interesting to see what the actual distance travel yeah. was, wouldn't it? You I know, think that. he had to travel at least five uh, meters more. Hammer. But he doesn't have a ball in his hand. It's harder to run the ball in his hand. Yeah. That 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 True. slows you down. But in but in terms of like that, the hammer anticipated the break. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. I was there, and I was thinking he's going to catch him. Yeah, I reckon the Deedon one earlier this year was better anyway. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm with you. Yeah, yeah. With me? I'm with you. Oh, there I'm you with go. you on the same yeah, page. Yeah. And oh, yeah. The that, yeah, because Deedon's not expected to make yeah. that tackle. I think the hammer is. Didn't have a problem with that one in any way. Ready? What's that? The Deedon tackle. Yeah, outstanding. That was good. Yeah. There was one. Maybe he can run the sprint. Tommy did oh, Lockie Ilias did one. Yes. Magic Crown and Jason Saab. No, uh, no, not Vegas, Magic Crown. Vegas. Vegas. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was a good one too. Was it on Jason Saab? It, uh, it yeah, I think it was. Yeah. Yeah. Jason Saab, yeah. That was, that was, a, that was him, amazing. Yeah. Massive play. Amazing. Cheering in the coaching box there? I was. I, Lockie's one of, you, you see it from him all the time. Yeah. I mean, one of his first games, he saves a try against Cronulla in the corner on Mortalo with a big smile on his face, knocks the ball out. Mm. Like he's just always in the frame. He's one of, and Dearden's the same. They're just, mm. they, they get there because they want to. Effort. Yeah. Well, uh, on that game as well, the cover tackle from Jacob Preston, the hammer got half a gap, mm. went through. Jacob Preston makes that, he ends up getting the tackle. He's not supposed to make that. Mm. So, so I, that was more impressive. It, you know, in my, <laughs> in my Poor opinion, old hammer. yes. <laughs> <laughs> Getting talked down now. Wasn't that good? <laughs> he did, he did, well, I, I've not even got him down for best try of the year. I reckon his teammate Trey Fuller got a better one against Manly. <laughs> I'm a big fan of the hammer. No, glasses are like you are. Where the hammer's concerned, apparently. <laughs> Huge fan. <laughs> oh dear. Here we go. Now, what the, what the, 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 oh. the WTF moment. Uh, Reedy, really, WTF moment of the Olympics. Of the Olympics. Um, WTF moment of the Olympics. Something that actually blew your mind. You thought, wow, that was impressive. Rather than... Like a sporting event? Anything. Well, I love the 100. So watching Noah Lyles win the 100 mm. I, is, it was amazing. He was no hope at the, the 70, wasn't he? He was No, he was Gonski. Yeah. I, I was actually in the... I'll tell you what was really interesting. I was in the mix zone mm. um, after the 200 when he collapsed on the track. Mm. And um, they... they Wheeled him a, out. There's a woman in charge of the mix zone. She, she was from one of those Scandinavian countries. Mm. And she's gone, uh, and all these journos are hovering around thinking that Noah Lyles might come through because he talks Noah Lyles. He always, Loves like it. a lot of the other athletes, um, when it's a heat or a semi final or whatever, they just walk straight through because they've still got the final to come. He talked every t- after every race, stopped and did a big press conference. So she's come out and gone, oh, no, Noah Lyles won't be talking today. He's got COVID, whatever. We've gone, oh, that's disappointing. So we're just hovering around. And two minutes later, she's come over and gone, uh, Noah Lyles is coming through. He's talking. And you should have, there was, would have been 50 journos. Just went boom. Just happy to, to get this COVID. microphone. No, just surrounded COVID. him. Yeah. Uh, it was amazing. He was so good. I thought yeah. you want to say it, it's a hoax. <laughs> no, well, it might have been. It might have been. But he's, he was, uh, that he, was for me. He's a good spokesman for the, he gets that he is front yes. and centre, wants to be front and centre and yep. owns it as well. Happy to talk, always, you know, it's, well, Shikari Richardson, she, after her heat in the 100 or semi, she just walked straight through and brushed everyone. Yeah. Well, it's interesting though, isn't it? Because he's got nine seconds. Yeah. So surely you give a bit of time and build, yep. get some more out of that, mm. that sporting mm. moment. Like it would make sense, wouldn't it? Yeah. It's not like you're out there for a long time. No. You're out there, boom, it's over. 
Exactly. So, good like on him. Fastest man in the league <laughs> on grand final days. But yeah, there was a lot of journalists just boom, just went. It was like all over it. What did you cover? You, you did a bit of golf. You did a bit of athletics. Rugby sevens. Rugby sevens. That went well in the end. Yeah, they did. Marky yeah. Mark played though. Yep. He was pretty good actually. And now he's at Wendy Park playing Nothing for the Roosters. Nothing out on the weekend. Yeah, he cleaned he? some bloke up on the weekend. Oh, you should see the tackle. It's unbelievable. Uh, he'll go good next year, I reckon. I don't know where they're going to put him. He's but... a big boy. He's a big yeah, unit. He's got some opportunities in the backs. Mm. Yeah. So while he's leaving. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. Manu. Yeah. yeah. Manu, so. Any breaking? Uh, did you cover that or not? Me or? No, I didn't do any breaking. No, did you cover Ray Gun. Did no, you... I didn't see Ray Gun, no. 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 Uh, mm. <laughs> thoughts on that, Jimmy? Fan? You, you shouldn't um, reward... That level of performance. Wow. So or Ray, celebrate it. Glasses <laughs> like, half empty on Ray Gun. No, no, no. Just... <laughs> Poor Ray Gun. She was a a product of the process. It wasn't her yeah, fault they oh, had that process. I'll well, say one, that. one, breaking isn't a sport. That's well, <laughs> but the IOC said they were for this, so you had to go along mm. with that. It's gone, though. It is it's what it gone is. for LA, mm. right? No, no, yeah, gone. Gone. Watched... Lacrosse, squash, flag football. You should coach the Australian side. Did she? Get him up there. Oh, I should. Yeah. <laughs> what about darts? Coach darts anyway the into the Olympics, you may as well. Yeah, like, yeah. I was about to say can't drink in venue, sport. though. No, you can't drink at the, the Olympics. Venues. You can't, you can't drink what? in venue. And zero alcohol. You get zero zero alcohol beer. So what, what's yeah. the point? Yeah, what's the point of having darts? Well, I agree there? with you. It's not me making those rules. <laughs> well, the at, IOC. At, at, the, at the stadium, there's no alcohol. No alcohol. Only zero, zero percent. So we went to Roland Garros. They had beer on tap. That's 1664, but it's only zero percent. Cronenberg. Is that what, 1664? Yeah, yeah. It's not yeah. a bad drop. Yeah, it's right. good. Yeah, it goes good. <laughs> so you can't, you can't have a beer and watch the 100 metres final? <laughs> uh, no, no. No. It's quite funny. Dave Rick and I were at Roland Garros. Yeah. And we were, uh, we were walking past the drinking area, the, yeah. the, the, the beer cellars, and we walked up to the bar. There's no one there. It's just me and Dave and some other person. And we said to them, was that, can we get beer? And they said, no, no, we've earned it at 0%. And the bloke's gone to us, oh, and by the way, there's a queue. And we turned around and there was like a half hour long queue, just staring daggers at the two of us. <laughs> Dave went, okay. Oh no, it was actually, it was me and Maddie Johns. And hot. No, it was me and Maddie. And me and Maddie gone, okay, see you later boys. And just woof. Well, played. that's a WTF moment, yeah. isn't it? They were filthy. They wanted to kill us. <laughs> yeah. I think the WTF is the fact that it was a half hour queue for zero percent yes. alcohol. There were, well, it was a drink. It was for all drinks. Oh, okay. Yeah. Fair enough. Surely uh, you'd just sneak some in, wouldn't you? You're like old little, school, little, little flask. flask. Yeah. That's yeah. not a bad shout. Yeah. Anyway, no no beer, alcohol, alcoholic beer is sold in an Olympic venue. That's what, um, in fact. the hip flask is what you did in your year eight disco at school there? So da darts would be no good because you've got to be having beers with darts. Even the dart throwers drink beer. Yes. No, it's on the ban list. Not allowed. You're not allowed anymore? No. no. Luke Littler doesn't it, uh, drink a beer. He, well, he's too young <laughs> for one. <laughs> on stage, he? Jimmy. He's, oh, Luke Littler. he's not 18 yet. 16, is 17. He? Yeah, no, yeah. he's not 18. Wow, he looks old. No, you, you actually, you actually, <laughs> he's you actually, aged quick. He's aged. You, you, wow. actually, you actually can't drink and play. It's it's on the ban list. It's a performance. Uh, when did that answer. come in? No, so it's cheer. always been here because when cheer. I was working on the darts three years ago, they'd be on stage, they can't drink. They go off stage. You know how they have those breaks every yeah. three or four, whatever? They go off. Wooshka. Big Woodstock down here. Oh, really? No, <laughs> yeah. I, th I thought they changed Absolutely. it because it's no. considered like a beta blocker. No. Nah. Stops the nerves. No. Did you work on the darts? Worked on it for about five, six years. Did Thanks you? for watching. Frees up the anxiety. Oh, I the yeah. yeah. I went to the darts the when I was in Sydney once. Yeah, it's great fun. Yeah. We went dressed as the dead presidents. <laughs> <laughs> James, your WTF. Uh, WTF moment. Uh it was on Matty John's show last night talking about the Super League Magic Round. There was a penalty conceded. Um, London Broncos were playing Hull FC. Broncos had the game sewn up. And then the last play of the game, it, it's gone out. And then the, basically the re the sprinklers have started the whole lot. Like the game's basically over. But the referee, our principal, took like 20 minutes to clear the pit. Some of the players had left, got them back on, and basically blew the whistle for the king team to kick it into touch and then the final the settlement game. it was just bizarre there was a job's worth Craig Lingard was coaching Castleford and he's walked onto the field uh, I don't know if it was before or after the game and the sprinklers come on and shot him straight, <laughs> straight in Sniper. the face yeah he said it went to the back of his throat he had to use Proper drenched everywhere. So, <laughs> Gee, someone must have been sitting there going, yeah. "We got one." <laughs> yeah, there you go. Where, where's that getting played this year? Maybe it was Ellen Road. Road yeah. Ellen Road was it? Mm. Was it close to its lowest gate? I think. Yeah. Was it? 
It used to be at St. James's Park, didn't it? Been all over. That, yeah. that it's better when it's a a weekend away for most people. That's what they love about it. You know, yeah. Cardiff or Millennium Stadium, yeah. um, Newcastle, Edinburgh, the, the, Newcastle. Newcastle's crowds have been massive when it's been there. The, mm. the timing of it didn't exactly make sense. I mean, you know, Premier League started opening weekend, the opening Premier. weekend mm. of the Premier League. Like, where, where's your focus going to be straight after the Olympics? I mean, yeah, bizarre. it used to be in the May Bank Holiday weekend, yep. didn't it? Are you okay after opening yeah. week of the Premier League, or you all right? Oh, look, I mean, <laughs> it's, it's it's disappointing. Everton, by the way, for our listeners out there, lost three 0 got to play us at off. home, mm. at home at Goodison Park. Apart from that, it was a great afternoon. Well, well, we might stay up by by default of the fact that like there's a heap of teams getting financial fair play <laughs> yeah, exactly. charges, so we might just mm. stay up. Yeah, the fact that. that like four teams get docked sixty points and then league the accountants. Up. That's become JD yeah. um, WTF. Yeah, mine's on um, halfbacks, and what well, just in general? <laughs> no, just WTF is when have they become so protected? You can't touch them no. anymore. Whether it's kick pressure, if they come into the line, you may as well not even go near them. Mm. You may as well just run up to them like this. Like there was three cont tackles on the week. The one was Billy Burns as he pa- as he passed penalty right in front. Newcastle take the two. You know, could have decided the game. There was a Cameron Murray one, and there was a Jack DeBellin one where he got 10 in the bin. Said he it was high. Mm. I don't think it was late. They're saying it was high. There was no concussion protocols. No one went off. Mm. Like, like, no like, one even bothers with kick pressure anymore. They well, just sort of jog through and put their hands up like this. Yeah, Can't. I say to young halves, like, there's never been a better time to be a halfback. Mm. Like, it hasn't, because you, you can get in a line and – they can't almost can't touch them, mm. you know, which is which is disappointing because you know they're fair game. They come in a line and, they, and you commit to your tackle. It's fair game. You understand the the kicking one though. That's fair. I mean, you saw what like you firsthand saw. Yeah, you I'm a fan of the kicking lock- one. If they do, you can still pressure them, but you got to wrap your arms around them. Yeah, that's what they're saying. You and can't run through legs. their legs and dive at their legs. That's that's different. Like, diving at their legs. Is, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, that was horrible. But if you go through and grab them on the waist, and sometimes that's enough to to change their kick selection as well or get some outside pressure on them as well. So you can do things there. But, you know, when you're trying to help your edge defend, it's so important that you get pressure on their halves and mm. it's, you're just not rewarded for it at times these days. So, But if that's how, that's how it is, then we're going to see a lot more halves coming through the grades, that's for sure. But both Scott had never played a game. <laughs> you know, I, I remember a game up in Townsville where he absolutely terrorised JT, mm. he every single time, like, he'd got sent off 20 times in that game. So, and I get it, sometimes they're late and you don't, I don't want to see them ones where the guy's relaxing and he and he's getting hit well late. But I remember Cooper Cronk would just play into the line. We played Melbourne in a prelim final in 2017 and we said, right, if he comes in the line, he's, he's going to wear it. Mm. And I'll be honest, we, we, Cooper Cronk must have got hit a dozen times in that game. Absolutely folded to at the line, and he just kept coming and coming and yeah. coming. And eventually, we we went one late, and Blairy went to the bin. Yeah. But you can't. It was it was it was great tough footy from a half who didn't care. He just kept doing his thing for his team. I, I don't mm. even think it's just the halfbacks now, though. JD yes. Josh Curran on the weekend mm. has got the ball and he's looking to ball play. And a, a Dolphins defender comes. Kafusi, yeah. Yeah, Kafusi comes to apply pressure to him. Now, um, Josh Curran lets go of the ball, but then is hit not even half a second after he's released the football and he gets the penalty. It's like, well, hang on. Like, well, you, you relax. You, how you, it, it makes it worse when you slow it down and fr- frame by frame. Yeah. But, like, at what point, are you, if you're committed to the tackle, there's got to be some leeway there that like a player can not have the ball in his we don't want it blatantly late no. but if you've released the pass you still are there allow for you are allowed to be hit and yeah. tackled because the the defender's clearly committed oh it's yeah it's driving me mad at the moment i'm thinking like mm. it just that's it's the, the the conundrum that the game faces in the modern age of it's a contact sport but how contact can it be yeah, it's along those lines, yeah, but it it's a contact sport. It's like it's not for everyone to play. Yeah, but there's a reason why there's so many people watching going to games because they actually like that kind of element. 
of well, society that they don't have to do themselves, but they like watching it. So the, there's a reason people still go to the Coliseum. Yeah, it, it's true. Yeah. It's mm. the gladiatorial nature that people want to watch. Yeah, that's why no one loves the breaking. <laughs> <laughs> mm. There's well, a bit of a they go at it in the breaking. It's they stare know, each other they down. Stare there's each no other contact. Down and there's no contact. Do these ones, you know? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Cross their arms and but stuff. But it's true. Like people, that's yawn, why didn't they yawn at each and other? UFC is so popular because people love the gladiatorial. There'll always be a place for it. Always. Yeah. You know? Um, my WTF quick one is uh, it happened yesterday at Wednesday, and the name of the player escapes me from the Gold Coast Titans, who made a mistake with his handling, and he was quick enough to get the boot on ball. Jaden Campbell, wasn't it? Is yeah, Jaden Campbell. Jayden Campbell. Yeah. Happened a couple of weeks ago as well. Yeah. Mistake made out of the hands. Oh, I'll, I'll throw my boot at it. I'll play oh, on. Yeah. Please change the rule. Change the rule where you have got to be, like you have to be in cricket when you celebrate a catch, you are in control of your celebration. You have to be in control of the ball onto your boot. Cost us a prelim final, 2019. Really? Yep. At South, yeah, we were. Um, Jack Whiten has gone. We've got kick pressure on him. He's dropped the ball. But That's right. He's managed to put a toe to it. Everybody thinks he's dropped it, and they've picked it up and scored in the corner for ex- exactly that. And I'm I'm with you. I think you you should have to catch the ball and drop it, control the drop. You're being you know, rewarded for a lack of uh, uh, the opposite of skill, it, essentially. As, uh, especially the, yeah. if you've touched it. Like if you if it's a low pass and you just tow it ahead, yeah, fair enough, fair. play on. But yep. if you've hands have hit it and you haven't controlled the drop, then can I hmm. play the devil's advocate? Here there? we go. Well, you're then asking the referee or the video referee to decide whether you've deliberately dropped the ball. Very or obvious. Well, it is very sometimes, obvious. Not all the time. It is very okay. obvious. Have you caught it? It's just okay. you catch it. Well, generally speaking, if they're fumbling around with it like that and it falls on the ground, fair enough. Then. That means they've stuffed it I've up. I've got no issue. I just thought I'd play the devil's advocate. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> just your favourite role. Jimmy's, looks very, really? Jimmy's very pensive. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm pondering. I, I actually don't mind that rule change. There's a couple of others I'd like to see brought in as well. Mm. Such as, um, well, obviously there was a couple of forward passes on the weekend. Now, unfortunately, the ball can travel forward according to the current rules. I think we could solve the issue of forward passes if we change that rule. And I don't think anyone would be too bothered if we took the momentum rule out of it. If you just said the ball can't travel forward, you, I think we have the technology available now. Yes. Uh, the reason the technology fails currently is I don't know how quickly it can be applied, but also the fact that the ball can travel forward. I think it messes up the algorithm because it can't determine whether it's come. It can't see whether it's come out of the hands, but it can see if it's gone forward. It can't see if it's come backwards out of the hands. So yeah, I, I think if you change like the, that rule, if you Jim. change the rules to say the ball cannot travel forward at all out of the hands. You would be able to solve this forward so pass. It's not the Cam Murray one you're talking about on Saturday night. It was Cam Murray, wasn't it? Yeah, that's forward. That's forward. From time it leaves his hands, it's yeah, forward. Yeah, that's forward. But I, it was a few there, I know what you mean. There's been ones. a couple others where they go back and and, they, and then they drift forward mm. or they bounce forward. Yeah, you know. I don't have an issue with the current rule. What's the issue? The tough one. Uh, that there's some clangers being missed. Well, that's footy. We miss clangers every week. Um. It's it, it's forty, but it's also a billion dollar industry, mm. oh. and it plenty humans, plenty on Jimmy. the line. Yeah, no humans but, humans but how, aren't perfect. I, I I know, but um, when sport becomes more and more important, and this decisions are, are life changing, then it, we become focused on getting more decisions correct m- more often. Then this is a way to to stop uh, a big game, a big moment being decided by, um someone's point of view whether or not the, the ball was the, the pass was forward it, another, to add into my WTF is the crackdown on the things that they said they were going to enforce in the preseason to all the coaches around the leg lift I think I saw two or three leg lift penalties on the weekend mm. the blockers oh god <laughs> the blockers <laughs> What's the matter, Jimmy? Oh, mate. <laughs> Don't start it. It could end up being blockers. a four-hour podcast, is, this. <laughs> you gave one, got to give the other one, and then you could see it. Yeah. You could see the last attempt they had that they won it on. That there was like only one block, and he was too scared to do anything. So yeah. if that's the norm now, once you get a free – you're almost going to get – it's like I'm saying you can't hit halfbacks. You're almost going to get a free shot, aren't you? Can I ask J.D., like, I, look, I, I would, wouldn't have had an issue if they gave those the Ponga field goal, right? 
But why are those blokes there? Why are they there? Why, just stay out the way. Why because, do have to get well, the, you've got nowhere to... What one? Where, where do you go? Go either side of Caelan. Why do you have to be right in front of him? Why, the, why do they have to be there? Get out the way. The, the problem is you've got to play... You've got to play, depending on how far you go down, but you generally, you've got to play pretty deep in, to get the time, kick the field goal. So get deep. So everybody has to get deep. So the only players who'd be in front of him would be the bloke playing the ball and the dummy half. Yes. Yeah. What's wrong with that, though? Why can't, why can't that be the what situation? What if you want to run it and play short? Well, don't. You, you're setting up for the field goal. Well, That's what you you're doing. Why can't you have the option to play short? Well, we, you can, but if you take the field goal, you risk... It yeah. being taken well, off that, you. That's where it's at now, isn't yeah. it? It's almost like you can't, you know, you, you can't touch a kicker. You can't block the kicker. So yeah. it's, it's if you're going like to take the field goal, mate, you basically got to telegraph it. Yeah, say, yeah, have a shot. The yeah. Field goal. Yeah. Was it was it that much of an issue in years gone by, blockers? Oh, it's oh, been. I think, I think it's, it's been, been a big yeah. moment. But, but, the, but it's, got, get, it's gone yeah. the day where there used to be like a, a yeah. staggered wall in front of the play the wall. At least that's gone. And I don't think either of those were the case. But it. It's Newcastle. Am I right? Newcastle kicked the first one, didn't they? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So it's a massive decision. Oh, huge. Yeah. Huge. Season defining. Yeah. Like, yeah. like that. It's that, end of their season. But, but, the, well, but not just not just for for the Sharks, not just for Newcastle, but other teams in the mixture well, as the well. The dogs. It affects the yeah. dogs. It's it. It's by the rules. What they told us in the preseason was you have to be in a position to catch the ball from the dummy half. So you yep. can't be in front of the dummy half, in line with the dummy half, where they know it's got to be a forward pass to get the ball. If you're a couple of steps back and you're a viable option to get the ball off the nine, that's they're happy with that. And I thought both of them that were turned down yeah. were in position if they wanted to, to pass the ball to them. Mm. So, again, it's... Mm. Anyway. A conundrum. It is a conundrum. We're going to have a summit with Annesley. There is a, I think there is a summit planned, isn't there? Are you going? No. <laughs> Why not? We'll be on holidays. Come on. Mate, he doesn't do the, the hard yards. <laughs> Actually, He's be, past no, that I'll now. Be, Remember, covering... he, wouldn't go to Ar- he wouldn't go to Origin Camp. Yeah, that's right. Um, it's too far. Because there's an hour. Yeah. It was too far. Yeah, when, hour in the car. When does Annesley speak about this stuff today? Today. Every yeah. Monday. 2.30. Every Monday. And As I we re- sit here right now, just before then. And I reckon he's about to fire up. What, uh, over what issue is that one? Over the criticism from Newcastle, yeah. New really? Yeah. Yes. Fine on the way, or save it for mail. Is it one of your mail items? What's that? No, no fines going. No, no. But I, I, when I spoke to someone at the NRL this morning, I get the feeling they weren't happy with Adam O'Brien's criticism of them. There you go. Okay. And they were going to fire back. Well, well, I thought the Phoenix Crossland one is a sin bin. Yeah. If that's five minutes or midway through that half. That's a sin bin. So why shouldn't it be with two seconds to go? You know what I mean? And he, Phoenix has been outstanding for the Knights. It's not criticism of him personally, but you, I mean, you, you got to get your poker face working on a bit. You know, like you got, you got to hide it a little bit better than making it so obvious that you because del- he he got a six again away. Not the the t- two tackles before that, and the referee saw how deliberate it was, and then he's come in and flopped and deliberately done it again. And I think there was another sin bin for something similar in the in a in a, what game was it? Can't remember, but it was a, it was a second effort in the game, and they got a sin bin from it as well. And you mm. can't argue with it because it's it spoils the game. Yeah. And to it's say cynical, that it was right, I mean, it's cynical, and it's. Um, I think the issue they have is that it doesn't always get sin binned. Yeah, delaying of the game around the ha- half time mark, but just because it doesn't always get sin binned, when they get it right, you know, you, you sort of I think you lose the right to complain. Yeah. Right? I think you're never going to get consistent. We always have this discussion. I hate the word consistency because you'll never get it. Yeah. But I'm with you. I think not with an attitude like that. <laughs> I think. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, if you well, listen, unless Jimmy's in the bunker every week, then you'll get consistent. If you yes, listen to the, com- the, the TV commentary, I don't know if it was Fox or Nine, but I thought it might have been Mick Innes. But as he was blowing the whistle for the penalty, he said he's going to go here. Yeah. The, yeah, he the did, commentators yeah. already said yeah. he's going to the bin here. This was before he went, so. Clearly, it was obvious that it was a professional foul. Yeah. Uh, Greg, all the way back on Thursday night, like that felt like a finals pace, a late finals pace game. That was quick. Uh, Penrith and Melbourne, the big storyline out of it is Nathan Cleary, obviously, in the shoulder, which makes me think the two most important players in the competition, potentially, given Cleary's importance for Penrith's pursuit of a four-peat, is the guy on his outside in the defensive line and the guy on his inside in the defensive line when he comes back? Because it sounds like that shoulder 
is going to be hanging on by a thread throughout the if he's not having surgery and he's got issue, he can rehab it to a point. But we've seen it. We saw it with Luai last year in the grand final. It eventually gave way. So big, big decision to make about who they put next to him. I, I guess they've got their favourites and they know their patterns and everything like that. But it's it's going to take something pretty big from Nathan Cleary toughness-wise to, to get through potentially three games of finals footy to get Penrith there again. Yeah, well, we were at the game and um, the Melbourne Storm, the way they started, they they took the crowd out of it. Obviously, Penrith got back into the competition, but then there was, what, over 20,000 people there. And when Nathan was down with his shoulder, the, the Penrith public w- was stunned to silence mm. because they know just how important this uh, person is to their premiership hopes for season 2024. Um, look, I think it's been reported he will be back for finals, but... He'll be fully aware of uh, the fact that he will get plenty of traffic at him. It'll be interesting to see whether or not Penrith then therefore change their defensive structure. We have seen it before where halfbacks, especially who kick off, will go to the very long side of the defensive line. So usually when you look at the defensive edge, we have the winger that holds the touchline, the center, and then it's the half, whether or not he may switch over to the wing or the set, probably the wing position and mm. move everybody in. Now, I know that's a lot of moving parts, but for the greater good of the team, we we might see that happen. Yes, you have to make some adjustments, but it keeps Cleary out of that contact with the edge back row. In when particular. does the switch happen then for the winger to go back for the kick? Tackle three, four on, on a yeah, system well, that, like that. that? That's something that they would have to work on. Yeah, yeah. The the challenge the challenge with this stuff is, and it, it happened to Luai in the grand final, is you have to position yourself so that you're not reaching, because when when you've got a shoulder issue, if you can keep your arms and your elbows tight to your stomach and stop yourself from reaching, you're fine because it, it, you're not really putting a lot of mm. pressure on the joint. It's when you have to reach and you get some contact or you have to grab someone that's when the shoulder becomes a real issue. So, and if you watch back in the grand final, Luai gets a bit too wide. The lead runner runs a hard line on his inside and he reaches out. He makes a tackle just short of the trial line, but that's where his shoulder came out again. So the challenge is not only where you defend, but it's how tight you have to defend to compensate for that. And that can then create space mm-hmm. on the edges as well. And I think, but if you look back at Luai, he dislocated his shoulder. He was in a bad way. And mm-hmm. he, he was back within four, was it three weeks he was back? Mm. four weeks it was amazing yeah. that he came back and played and by all reports and you don't know whether they're just dumbing it down a little bit so that not everybody knows he's subluxed a little bit and he's done minimal damage to his labor and if that's the case he, he, he'll be almost fully fit come finals okay he, he'll be less pressure on him or on the joint than Luai was so it'll be interesting to see uh, how he but the, the bloke's a freak isn't he so do you, reckon the, do you reckon as a coach, JD, you'd be open to lying about the extent of inju- the injury? To the press, you mean, and to yeah, the public? Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. We well, don't yeah. have to lie. <laughs> you just don't have to tell the truth, and there's yeah, a difference. So this is the thing about, oh, about this. Yeah, I agree. Thing. And I sat oh, in the press conference last year with Sam Kerr, and she did a calf the day before. Yeah. And the questioning, okay, people didn't know about it, but for the next week or two, we didn't know the severity of it. Mm. And the the coach and everyone around didn't tell lies, but they just didn't tell yeah. the truth. Yeah. That's a much better way to handle it. I remember having a blue with a coach 10 years ago because he lied all week about his team, lied to us all. We asked the question and he's come in the press conference and he said, yeah, I lied to you all week. I said to him, I said, mate, how are we supposed to believe you next time you Tell us anything. Why are you I looking and pointing at Jason? As you say that? <laughs> I find it really awkward. Yeah. Because you, 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 you can answer the question without lying. You can, and they you ask know. you. And the amount of times where I've said in my head, no, nah, I'm not telling them. Yeah. <laughs> and my biggest problem is I'm too honest. So, and yeah. when you ask me the question, I go, mm, yeah, he's playing. <laughs> and I didn't want to tell you he's playing. It might yeah. be a guy making a debut and you're trying to take the pressure off him. But then they ask you, oh, we've just watched training there and – Looks like uh, Shaq Mitchell's playing this week, making his debut. Is he? Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah, like, I, don't, I don't want to say no and then cop that but situation Jay, where you're just going to hammer me. When, when you lie, how are we supposed to believe you next time? But sometimes it's not about it's not about deceiving you or deceiving the public. It's about protecting the player. Yeah. But you can sometimes do that without lying. Yeah, and I, the know, Nathan yeah. one's, a, yeah. the, he's injured, so he doesn't have to lie. You just no. say, well, you'll have to wait and see when the, when the team runs, they don't have to. Oh, they don't get have to tell the truth. Of providing us with misinformation. Oh. Well, that's Di- not misinformation. Or dis- disinformation. Well, it's better than lying, Jimmy. Is it? Yeah. Oh well, 
I don't believe in disinformation or misinformation. I think there's a <laughs> the truth and there's lie. a lie. <laughs> just like like a, a coach is there. Just it, basic coach's job is to win the game. But then, how do we trust you next time you tell us something? Do we you can't think your trust coach you. Cares about trusting. <laughs> yeah, I think some of them do. JD obviously did. Yeah, that's You've just got you. relations well, with that's, up, well, that's, that, that, that's up to you to believe him or not. Next time, it depends. It depends when it is. If it's a grand final or it's a big game, and you and you deliberately want to hide something or make sure that it doesn't get Cooper out. Cooper Cronk. Cooper Cronk's yeah. a good Bruce, example. Bruce, they, never, they never said lied he that wasn't week. playing he and they named lied. him in the squad. Mm. Yeah. And when the squad got reduced, he was still in the squad. Yeah. So he and didn't Robo, say he wasn't playing, didn't no. say he was playing. But surely you as you as an intelligent individual yeah. could understand the fact that the, the understand the reason why the coach would lie. But you don't have to lie, Jimmy. Robbo never that week or Cooper Cronk, Robbo got asked about him all week, never lied once. Just yeah. didn't tell us the answer. Don't tell the truth. You Easy. don't have to lie. Um, you just don't have to answer the question. I mean, Cooper Cronk, that, that whole game, he actually lied in the sense that he played the game without playing the game. He didn't touch the ball, didn't make yeah. a tackle. It was one of the greatest grand final performances of all time. It was yeah. a masterpiece. It was, yeah, it was unbelievable. Wasn't it? <laughs> it was the what greatest a way to finish decoy career. of that all was his time. last game, wasn't it? No, he played again the following year, didn't he? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. They won the comp again, then he finished. Somehow. But Next you could see game. exactly the minute when the painkillers wore off. And God, he was in some pain. See, next time, no I asked, he's in the next time I asked Jimmy a question of any prominence, he tells me the answer. I'm not going to know whether to believe him or not now. Yeah, we've just got to have well, to... Well, that's up to you, isn't it? Your <laughs> instincts about the level of truth about what and, he's saying. And again, like if you say, you know, you guys will say, um, don't answer the question. You don't have to answer it. If you don't answer it, you'll make up your own stories. So well, that's right. if you don't <laughs> answer it, you're going to go go off on a tangent and, make, and then the next journal will have a different point oh. of view of not answering it. So it's it's not a, it's not a, it's a yeah. Now to the I, moment, I'd rather just say anyway, unless I'm deliberately concealing. Fair it. enough. Now to this moment of the podcast where we're not sure if we can believe the man who's telling us what uh-huh. he's telling us. Read about it. Read about it. Read his mail. Promise to tell the truth here, Brent. It's a big week for the game, Adam. Wednesday night, the uh, Immortals. I thought next. you were going to talk about expansion, maybe. Week, I think it's Wednesday, isn't it? Wednesday, the SCG. Yes. Uh, there's a bit of a whisper going around that there might be two. Two Immortals. Two Immortals. Well, that's there's a whisper doing the How rounds. How many have we got at the moment? 14? It's not why, my whisper. Uh, I think it's 14, yeah. yeah. I think it's I think it's almost at a point where we need to just put a freeze on the whole thing for a while because I think when you have too many people in there, it dilutes the value of it. But I'm intrigued because the two names that get mentioned most frequently, Cam Smith and Ronnie Coote. Ronnie Coote's been nominated now, I think it's around three or four times. Right? Mm. And my view is if you get nominated three or four times and you don't get in, that's it. You don't get nominated anymore. I think because that tells me you're not an immortal, mm. and I, and this was put forward as a proposal at the meeting. Actually, a, a journal, one of the journals put it forward. Are you in the? I'm not. No, I'm not no. in the committee. But one, I know one of the journals put it forward and said, um, if you get nominated three times and you don't get in, that's the end. You don't get nominated anymore. Same for the Hall of Fame as well, isn't it? Well, I don't know. I, well, I don't think there's any rule at the moment on t- how many times yep. you get nominated for it. But I think in the NFL they have a system where, um, in their Hall of Fame, what's it called over It's there? the baseball, I think. It's yeah. baseball. Mm. If you get nominated a certain amount of times, there's a cutoff. We mm. don't have one. It's it's infinite. It's infinite, yeah. Do you, do you guys have a view? Do Because my view is if, you, if, if you're nominated three... I, know, I understand what you're yeah. saying. Like, if you miss the cut, then by definition, you, you, you okay. can't be the immortal. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I get it. Thoughts? Mm. Any thoughts on it? Well, it's a bit like if you... <laughs> I, 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 I don't want to answer the question because I'll, I'll be accused of... You know, well, if you get asked that, withholding the truth, Reedy, if you ask a girl out on a date four times, she said no four times, four times, and then the fifth time she says yes, you, you're wondering if it has longevity. Yes. If it took it that long to say yes, she's just fe- feeling sorry for if you. If it's really, yeah, yeah it's what, really love in her heart. Yeah, so I think sometimes though, like, I get, yeah, I can, I can see the sense in having a cut off, but yeah, it definitely needs to be at least three because sometimes it just you, who you compete with, it might be the finest of margins that you get overlooked in this particular occasion. But yeah, I, I'm a big fan of Ron Coote and what he's done in the game. And, you know, it, I don't think anyone would complain if he did get nominated as a inducted in anyone. Yeah. So he's, so Smith can be straight in cause he like, as soon as you get nominated for the hall of fame, you can then 
Yeah, so Smith Cameron will be in the Hall of Fame. Or I think he, mm. I think he's already in the Hall of Fame, right? He got put in this time around. This time around, so yeah. So then you become automatically eligible to be an immortal. <laughs> yeah. I had a look at that Hall of Fame list, and no wonder. People, people were saying at the time, oh, bloody New South Wales, they can't get across the line against this Queensland, blah, blah, blah. They're not good enough, this, that, and the other. And then the moment that five of them become eligible for the Hall of Fame, they're straight they're in. Straight in, yeah. It's a, fair, <laughs> it's a fair reference point to how bloody good it was yeah, and how true. difficult it was for New South Wales yep. in yep. those years. So. Yeah, hey, uh, speaking of Queensland, is um, it could be a big week for Corey Horsburgh. Um, so he's obviously obviously been given permission by Canberra to have a look around the NRL and see what's mm. out there for him. Um, there's at least three three clubs I think have expressed an interest: the Tigers, Broncos, and Dragons. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I think the plans are to have chats with all those clubs, uh, and then Corey will make a decision. Now, I wouldn't say he's definitely going to leave Canberra. I think Canberra would love to keep him. There's, uh, there's officials in Canberra who would love for him to stay. Uh, what's happening? Why are you laughing? I don't know. What's happened, Jimmy? You take the mickey? Charlie's disappeared. Just, He's laughing. I mean, what are you laughing about? The fence Reed he's sitting on? Or? <laughs> Jimmy's. Jim, what's I don't know. Just keep going. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just smiling. Is he bagging my mate? <laughs> Is he? Well, hold on. And, and in breaking news, we're going to expand. Yeah, yeah. Another team. <laughs> PNG's coming in. So where's Corey Horsburgh going to go, by the way? Where's uh, he going to lob? Well, <laughs> he's talking to clubs. There's clubs yes. who want him. But I think Canberra will be happy for him. To, certain people in Canberra will be happy for him to stay. Okay. I don't think it's a foregone conclusion. Hopefully it works leave. out. What are you crying about now? <laughs> really, really, I'm finding that baffling that they'd be happy for him to stay. What's that? Well, after telling him where to go, <laughs> he's, basically. He, did, he, did he play Origin last year, Corey yeah. Horsburgh? Yeah. He was origin. He was one of their best players last yeah, season. Yeah. And this year, he can't – he's not even – and they're not playing well at the moment, and he's still not even close. He's closer to I, Ron Massey Cup than he is. I, I spoke about it a few weeks ago when I've done a few Canberra games in the commentary, and there's a noticeable difference when Papali and Tarpany leave the field. It's mm. it's a huge impact on their team. And you would think someone like Corey Horsburgh, who has got some ball-playing ability too to keep the flow of their game, would come into the side. But I just assume there was some – Something a reason why he wasn't coming well, to the side. Well, I think him and Ricky so have uh, butted heads a bit this year. I think that's yeah, been I, an I issue. can understand that, but yeah, that's, I find it odd just that he still might stay. That's all. Mm. Any he more? Might play, he might get a start again this week, Corey. Given their battling, yeah. I think he played sixty-five minutes in New South Wales Cup at the weekend. So well, Ricky called them precious after the game, which was pretty brutal. It was. He smashed them, didn't he? Again, yeah, a yeah. boys' game or something, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, just quickly, Ryan Pappenhaus. I just checked on Paps today with Melbourne. Um, they've been talking to him for quite a while, and it doesn't seem to really be going anywhere, but I'm assured that uh, they're pretty positive. Paps will sign an extension soon enough and stay in Melbourne uh, and be there long term. Expecting that in a few go. days, a few days. And I've got, uh, and in further news, <laughs> yeah. uh, the WA Bears will be announced in 2027. <laughs> when, when, have you got any, any uh, when are they looking at making those decisions? I, the it expansion? Keep, no, I think that we all know they're expanding, but... So it's closed bears, now. It's closed. They've, it's had closed. No, they've had nine bids, I think. Okay. Nine official bids. And they'll make a decision either the week of grand final or the week after. And they'll make a decision on the first team that's coming in? No, or the, the first two. First two. At yeah. least the first two. Yeah. Which we know who they are. And, they're and, the Bears in 20... Or WA in 27, PNG in 28, and then South Island potentially in... PNG. A few years after that, South Island, New Zealand. They're the favourites to be the, the other team to come in. Oh, but this will all hinge on there's a bit of animosity between the NRL and the clubs over this. There's a bit of argy-bargy. So there's a bit bit of stuff to work out before they make it official. I think uh, Belandy so far has got what he wants. I can see him getting what he wants again. Yeah. It drives me crazy that the clubs like op- opposing this. I just don't get it. Well, they're, they're, not a, they're not dead set opposed to it. They just want a bit of... A bit of uh, you know what I don't understand, yeah. really? Why, why every yeah. time a team comes in, yeah. do the NRL have to pay the current clubs more money? I'll tell you why, though, JD. Why, there is, why there is, is a that? reason behind that, right? Because the way the game's set up now, right, yeah. the ARL commission is is the clubs have a share of the commission. Yep. So there's 17 clubs, the two states, they're the shareholders in the commission, yep. right? So the game is worth a certain amount of money. So if you bring in three three new teams, that dilutes the value of their share. Yeah, I understand. Do you understand? I, I, so, yeah, but, so but their view yeah, but is that you're diluting right? the value of our share. You need to give us some money to, to compensate yeah, but, us for that. And that's what I'm saying. Like, if it, I think it's around five million clubs get at the moment 
Yeah, right. above From the cap. Above the cap. Yeah, they want five seven. million. They want seven to bring new teams in. They want seven. Seven. Yep. So plus, that's an extra plus, two million per seventeen teams. That's an extra thirty-four million. Yes, plus a. Four, but how, plus what, a what I'm asking plus is plus a one or four million dollar payment. So that's what I'm saying. What I'm asking is why the need to get an extra two million. I'm all for not losing money. I don't think if bringing new teams in and the clubs should lose money from what their current deal is. But why more money? Because they're saying that's what you need to reward us for bringing in more teams. And they will get that with the TV rights deal, which is up at around the same time as the 19th team coming in. Well, in Perth, PNG. Yes, 19th team. Perth yeah. coming in, you're, ch- you're adding a game in, in a time zone that isn't in there at the moment mm-hmm. and officially becoming a national game by play- putting a team yep. in Perth. You bring a team in PNG, again, a different time zone, and again, millions of eyes, there's got to be like some benefits to that, surely. And, and the other thing is, if you look at it right now, our broadcasting deal compared to the new AFL broadcasting deal is significantly less. So I think the clubs believe the next broadcasting deal will be a massive uplift on the deal I've got now. Yeah. Yeah, but per- so they're saying the game should be able to afford it because you, you need to go and get us a better television deal. Because the current TV deal compared to the AFL is way below par. Per, per team? Well, a so overall value. Do you know overall what I mean? Value. Teams, yeah. o- overall value per club. Mm. You know what I mean? Because AFL have more teams and have yep. much bigger squads, bigger expenses. It's different set up in the AFL because their their central revenue distribution is much lower than yes. the NRL, but their central um, commercial help and other revenue areas that they can help with the AFL with the clubs is far, far greater. Mm. It's massive. Uh, we, their, their revenue from outside on game day and all of that is huge in AFL, and that's where NRL needs to kind of catch up. And they are with better crowds coming in, yeah. all of that. AFL are averaging like you know, 40, 50,000 per game. NRL are doing well if they get average of 20 some clubs. That's what I don't understand, like why we don't generate more than AFL in terms of a TV license. Because the game to watch on TV is much better in the NRL than it is the uh, AFL. AFL's advantage is that it has, it's longer, so you can fit in more ad breaks. More ad breaks that's, yep. that's purely yeah, in that a commercial... Free to wear. It's yep. national. Like, national to a, a sense, yep. but yeah, they, they just do a really good job with it. But I think the gap's closing in that sense. And mm. Philandis has been the driver of that because he's a revenue guy. He's yeah, an accountant. Yeah. So yep. he's been able to well, see to where the fair, numbers. Andrew Abdo's uh, yeah, commercial like he, guy as well. And he deserves a lot of credit for that. Absolutely. But the, there's a big gap between the broadcasting deals right now. Won't be forever. No. No uh, Stefano or Tukamano. He, he got done yeah. while I was away. Did no, you break that, Jimmy? Yeah. Uh, I knew it would be... Imminent. imminent yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a bit like Corey Horsburgh. Yeah, it's yeah. imminent. Well, actually, you know, for, for my mail today, Daniel Sofiti will have a decision um, it, incoming in the next couple of weeks. Latrell Mitchell uh, and his representative are set to meet with South Sydney staff, so um, we'll find out what happens there. At Cronulla, the Sharks now, um, they will look to get a home semi. The NRL are going to chat with them about potentially <laughs> moving that game to Allianz Stadium, but we won't know until things have been confirmed. Oh, that's good. Um, I like that. And we'll then Mitchell that Moses is uh, due to meet with Jason Riles uh, in October to talk all things Parramatta moving forward. So, uh, yeah, be looking forward to what happens there. So that's my mail. Did you make that up? <laughs> It's my mail. <laughs> I can't tell you oh, my source. Uh, I can't reveal my source. That was good, really. that Cronulla mail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, you, see what I, you see what I've done You know, there. last year they played there at Cronulla. Yeah, I know, but argument. obviously because of that hotel, you know, the, the NRL no, the with all the revenue, year. the yeah, revenue the things. Same issue from uh, last year, Jimmy. Well, I think what, what, what my sources are saying, depending on, <laughs> depending on the potential opponent, they could look to move that game and offer a financial incentive to the Cronulla Sharks to move that semi final uh, to Allianz Stadium. That's good mail. I Gentlemen, like uh, time's got us after about an hour and a half. <laughs> JD, thank you. Have a great no week. It's been a great segment, lads. Good to have you back. <laughs> oh, great Thanks. to be back. Yeah, Jimmy's wonderful to work with. <laughs> Jimmy and Rudy, thank you. That was a Monday scrum. Have a great week. Oh, sorry, man. <laughs>